Good day, everybody. This is Louie. How you doing today? Uh, I wanted to talk to you about uh, our Constitution today. Um, the thing is, is our First Amendment right is freedom of religion, speech, and freedom to assemble. Now, we were given that freedom by our forefathers. And our forefathers did that because of how things were in England. They uh, wanted a Protestant only religion in England where we came from well in Europe where we came from and our forefathers had the forethought of you know what everybody should be able to, re to worship God in their own way if they choose to uh, they gave us the right to assemble that way nobody could trample all over our freedom of religion and they gave us the freedom of speech so that we can speak our minds about our beliefs, whether it be political, religious, or just everyday conversation, small talk. Like, say, for example, today it's a sunny day. I don't know if you can tell in the video or not, but it's a sunny day today. But if I want to go and say that it's dark and cloudy, I'd be able to and not be persecuted for it. Yeah, I would be lying, granted, and there would be a moral persecution over that. Or something like that but there's really no laws against it I mean there is a law saying you can't hire fire in the theater unless the theater is on fire and there's you know a couple laws that but they're for the safety of people however the point is this coronavirus has interrupted our First Amendment rights um, it's interrupted several of our constitutional rights but the biggest one is the First Amendment they are preventing churches from being open they are preventing I mean it, they've gone as far as to arrest pastors and con members of congregations for worshiping God um, and today we attended a new church for us um, it was one that uh, Ashley had uh, investigated herself she spoke with the pastor herself I guess so I guess investigated isn't really the right word but she spoke with the pastor and he gave her a description of what the services were like and how people were there so we decided you know what let's just go and see for ourselves and it was a great experience um, the pastor was very pleasant the wife who's also a pastor at that church is was also very pleasant um, the members of the congregation there was only a few uh, in fact, Little House on a Prairie, if you've ever seen it, their congregation was probably six times the size of the one that we just attended. However, that's okay. The problem I found, however, wasn't so much the service. Um, one of the members of the congregation has um, long-term health care individuals coming in and taking care of them. And... Uh, they're refusing to allow him to go to church. They're literally stepping all over his First Amendment rights. The problem that uh, he's going to run across if he accuses them of taking away his First Amendment rights is a lot of defense with that would be that the Constitution is for government only. It's, it's against the government, not private citizens, privately held businesses and such. So the problem here is, do they have the right to stop him from going to church? Or do they have to let him go to church? Now, anybody that has any kind of religious beliefs would say, no, they do not have the right to stop him from going to church. However, you're not dealing with people who are following, if they have any, and they're following their religious beliefs. You have people that are trying to do the right thing, and I'm using quotation marks, do the right thing for the man. Um, it's a dilemma I don't know the answer to. I did suggest that he speak to a lawyer, and I recommended a very good lawyer. And the pastor that I spoke to will probably pass that information on. But the thing is, is listen. If you want to go to church, don't let anybody stop you. I don't care if you need in-home care. I don't care if you're living in a nursing home. If 
you're living in an insane asylum or what have you, do not let somebody stop you. If you want to attend a religious service of whatever branch of religion you follow, whether it be Christianity, Muslim, or Judaism, or whatever, even if it's uh, Satanism. I, I'm against Satanism. I'm against paganism. But even if it's that, you can't let people stop you. It is your right to do it, okay? And quite frankly, it sickens me to think that somebody can stomp all over somebody else's rights. And I honestly believe that there should be laws enacted, constitutional amendments enacted, that uh, prevent private citizens and businesses from stomping all over your your for your uh, constitutional rights. It is a civil liberties thing, and he, he should have the right to do to go to church, uh, especially when someone shows up to give him a ride. Um, that's just that simple. The thing is, though, this lockdown that we've been having going on, even though most states, I think all states now, have some sort of progress to reopening going, um, people are tired of it. They are getting very tired of it. There's people going into stores without their masks now, which is, I'm not saying I'm against that. I'm not saying I'm for it. I'm saying this is what I'm observing. There's people not using masks in stores. There's people not using masks in public in general. There's people getting closer than six feet. There's even some that have started shaking hands again. And quite frankly, I think what they're realizing is something that I said early on, that there's more hype to this than there is meat. I'm not saying that deaths didn't happen. Uh, Lord knows deaths have happened from the coronavirus. But I also know that the totals they're giving us are not accurate totals because they're counting everything as a coronavirus death, even heart attacks and auto accidents and things like that. So I know the numbers aren't quite right. And it's just because people will think they can get more money from the government for having these deaths. Okay? And some have been caught, and like I said New York, before, New York State's getting sued over it, Connecticut's getting sued over it, Illinois is getting sued over it, and I believe Pennsylvania's getting sued over it. And I'm sure there's other places, I've, I've, possibly even California. They're getting sued because they're counting corona deaths that aren't actually corona deaths. And I implore the governors to not only stop that practice, but to stop arresting people for enjoying their constitutional rights, like the First Amendment, like the Second Amendment. Stop infringing on those rights, because what's going to happen is, in the end, you're going to end up losing. The American people are tired of it. We are a cooperative group, but we're only going to be cooperative for so long, and then we're going to say, you know what, screw all this. If I get sick, I get sick. And that's what's happening right now. Drop these First Amendment and Second Amendment, Third Amendment, all, all of the amendments that you're violating. Stop violating them. Give us back our, re our freedoms or suffer the consequences. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if the lawsuits I heard about against New York State, for example, go through, New York State will have to dissolve. They are going to be very expensive lawsuits, and a lot of these people refuse to settle. They're going for the throat. They are going for the juggler. And it's all because Cuomo, in his bullish way, decided that our constitutional rights didn't matter. The governor of Virginia did the same thing. And he was called out on it. And you know what his answer was? I never gave the constitutional rights a thought. That's not for me to think of. Excuse me? As a governor, it is your responsibility to make sure your people's rights are not trampled on. And that's what these governors are doing. And it's time to bring it to an end. Have a good day.